everyone, I'm Dr. Becca Singson, an obstetrician gynecologist, and I'm here to talk to you about pregnancy and women's health in the time of COVID. Mm, generally, immunization should not be given during the first trimester to avoid coincidental association with spontaneous abortion, which is common during the first trimester. Also, given that there's limited data available regarding the safety of the COVID-19 vaccines for people who are pregnant, it is best that we understand first the different kinds of vaccines for COVID-19 that are available right now. So currently, what is available under the Emergency Use Authorization in the Philippines are Sinovac, AstraZeneca, and Sputnik, each of them working differently. Inactivated vaccines like Sinovac contain viruses whose genetic material has been destroyed by heat, chemicals, or radiation, so they cannot infect your cells and replicate, but they can still trigger an immune response. Inactivated vaccines are safe for use in pregnancy. However, there is no data to prove the safety of the inactivated COVID-19 vaccine in pregnancy at the moment, so we really don't know. On the other hand, Oxford, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, and Yamalaya, Sputnik, which are viral vector vaccines, do not contain antigens, but rather they use your body's own cells to produce them. So a modified virus, which is the vector, is used to deliver the genetic code for the antigen. And in the case of COVID-19, we use the spike proteins found on the surface of the virus into the human cells. So by infecting cells and instructing them to make large amounts of antigen, which then can trigger an immune response, the vaccine mimics what happens during natural infection with certain pathogens, especially viruses. However, there are no data, again, specific uh, regarding safety in pregnancy. Now, the third is the Novavax, which are protein subunit vaccines, which contain fragments of protein and or polysaccharides, which come from the pathogen, but they also do not have data, again, to prove whether this is safe in pregnancy or not. Lastly, mRNA vaccines like Pfizer, Biotech, Moderna conducted a study involving 84 pregnant women, 31 lactating, and 16 non-pregnant women who received two doses of the Pfizer, BioNTech, or Moderna mRNA COVID vaccine. And they showed very rare side effects like fever and chills, which occurred with similar frequency in all participants. Now, vaccine-induced antibodies were found in all umbilical cord blood. Although antibody levels were higher in the mother's blood than in the umbilical cord blood, the difference was not statistically significant. So these mRNA vaccines generate the coronavirus spike proteins by using the host cells. Well, these vaccines are unlikely to pose a specific risk for people who are pregnant. However, the actual risks of mRNA vaccines to a pregnant person and her fetus are really unknown at this time. Thus, mRNA vaccines should be offered to pregnant and breastfeeding women only if they are classified to be in the high-risk uh, population group for priority vaccination, which includes frontline health workers and uniformed personnel. There is limited data on the safety of COVID-19 vaccines in breastfeeding women or the effects of mRNA vaccines on the breastfed infant or on milk production or excretion. However, vaccine-induced antibodies were found in the breast milk samples among women given the Pfizer BioNTech and the Moderna mRNA COVID-19 vaccine, which indicates that there is a transfer of antibodies from the mothers to the infants. Breastfeeding mothers who are part of the priority eligible population group may choose to be vaccinated if they wish. And there's also no recommendation from the WHO to discontinue breastfeeding for those who are vaccinated with Pfizer BioNTech.
Prior to vaccination, a pregnancy test is not a requirement unless the patient is suspected of being pregnant. However, if a patient has received the first dose of the vaccine but suspects the possibility of being pregnant, then a pregnancy test should be done prior to the next dose. Other than that, key consideration includes eligibility, informed consent, pre-vaccination counseling, and full information about the vaccines. First is to consider whether or not the patient is part of the priority eligible population group. And if they are, then the option to be vaccinated should not be refused. If the patient chooses to be vaccinated, an informed consent should be signed after a thorough pre-vaccination counseling. For the patient to be able to make an informed consent, will full information regarding vaccine phase status, available data regarding the benefits, the risks, safety and efficacy, and risk management plan, in cases where adverse events can occur after immunization, must be disclosed and it has to be documented to the patient. Factors to be considered in the pre-vaccination counseling include the potential efficacy of the vaccine in the general population, the rate of transmission of COVID-19 infection in the community, and the lack of data on pregnancy and the known side effects of the vaccine in the general population. Documented local symptoms, which include pain, swelling, redness at the injection site, localized uh, axillary lymphadenopathy on the same side as the vaccinated arm, as well as most common systemic symptoms like fatigue, headache, chills, um, muscle pains, um, arthralgia, uh, joint pains should be disclosed to the patient and it also goes without saying that if the pregnant or breastfeeding patient refuses the vaccine she should be supported with her decision that's all for today tune in next time by clicking that subscribe button you can also follow me on instagram and facebook thanks everyone for watching